fundamental Christianity was created in response to theological modernism. Um, fundamentalist Christianity was created uh, to reject the theory of evolution. And fundamentalists are very cult-like today. And they have a lot of really abusive behaviors that um, also aren't unique to fundamentalists. They are pretty uh, uniform to extreme Christians throughout the United States. Okay. Um, I'm generally going to say fundies throughout this video, but it's absolutely not confined only to fundamentalist Christians, what I'm about to talk about, nor is it confined only to Christianity. Okay. Because I know for a fact that these things all also happen in Judaism and Islam and um, pretty much any other religion you can name. Um, but I've had the most personal experience with fundamentalist Christianity and abusive Christians in my lifetime as an American. Um, so I'm going to tell y'all all about how the trans cult is inextricably linked to Christian fundamentalism, to abusive Christian values without question. Okay. So first we're going to talk about, um, the abusive values and behaviors within the Christian church. And then we're going to talk about the abusive values and behaviors within the trans cult that almost exactly mirror those of Christianity. Okay. So in fundy circles, um, you have to be a member. And if you're a member, then you've accepted Jesus Christ as your savior. Okay. And you've also likely been baptized, um, probably more than once. Um, so you have to be, that's how you be part of the in-group is you're a, um, you're a saved member. You're a, um, you're a known devoted Christian, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and there are very clear rules for how you behave, um, not just within the church, but at home. And there is also extreme sexism in how you treat boys versus girls. And basically you are required to conform to sexist stereotypes about your sex. So if you're a boy, you're off playing soccer. If you're a girl, you're at home learning to cook. The end. There's just really no gray area. Um, that comes from a lot of homophobia on, on the Christian's uh, end, but we're going to get into that later. Um, so it's obviously very inherently sexist, right? And in a lot of churches, women aren't able to hold high positions of power within the church. It's not true of every church, but it's true of most churches. Um, and a lot of the time, like technically women are able to hold positions of power, but only men pursue those positions because patriarchy. But anyway, um, so something that Christians do is they informally excommunicate, but also formally see Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, they also formally excommunicate people from their church if they have, you know, committed a wrongdoing, if they're just not behaving correctly. Like an informal um, excommunication would be everyone at church knows that you did this thing that they felt badly about that they don't like. And instead of formally excommunicating you and saying, hey, you are no longer a member of this church, everyone's just horrible to you to the point where you and probably your whole family have to stop going to church there and you might even have to move houses. Um, there are sometimes uh, like formal ceremonies where you have to like go to a church member and have, you know, your, your religious um, beliefs like revoked and there's a, a formal like dance about it. Okay. But anyway, um, also within fundamentalist Christian circles, indoctrinating children is mandatory. You have to have them learning all these things about the Bible. You have to have them learning all these things about Jesus. Your, um, your child is often homeschooled because, um, you know, you don't want your kid learning that secular stuff in public school, right? And secular is the word that they use for people who are not within their fundamentalist circle, okay? Um, it's like Gentile, but it's secular. Um, it's so it's mandatory to indoctrinate your children. It's mandatory to force them to believe what you believe. And that's honestly pretty easy to do with very young children because 
you know, you, you tell them something and they, or you show, read them a book and then they're like, oh yeah, okay, I get this. When it's not really presented to them in a way that is like <laughs> logical, <laughs> it's just presented to them as fact. Okay. Anyway, so yeah, indoctrinating your children is expected and it's mandatory. Like if your kid um, isn't, you know, isn't doing this thing, I wasn't raised <laughs> that seriously. I wasn't raised seriously fundamentalist Christian, just putting that out there. Okay. But I have had a lot of experiences uh, with fundamentalist Christians and I do have extended mam family members who are fundamentalist Christians. So I know what I'm fucking talking about. But if your kid is doing something that's not okay. Like, for example, um, breaking sexist stereotypes. Like, if you have a daughter who's really into soccer and she really loves soccer, like, that might be a problem. You know, you may only let her play soccer until, like, fifth grade or something and then say, you know, you really need to focus on becoming a better wife or some bullshit like that. Or, you know, you may have, like, a son who's really... I don't fucking know. I didn't plan out this... Uh, example you may have a son who's effeminate maybe he doesn't like fishing or something and that's bad um and you either force them to do the things that you want them to do because sex is stereotypes or you don't allow them to do the exact things that they want to do um because that's just wrong so outsiders are bad right you don't associate with outsiders within fundamentalist Christianity a lot of the time. And if you do, um, it's to a level, right? Um, you, you might work with some secular people. You might actually send your kid to public school and maybe they have some secular friends. Um, but there's, there's a, a point that you're not supposed to cross. Like your kid might, it's okay if she has a best friend who's secular, but there's no way. She's not marrying a guy who isn't Christian. There's no way she's not marrying a guy who isn't Jewish. There's no way he's not marrying a woman who isn't Muslim, etc. Okay? Or like just that, things of that nature. Like it's okay to associate with the secular folks to a degree. But a lot of the times, um, this gets really scary, but it's extremely common in the US, is a family becomes just extremely insular. They do not associate with anyone outside of their family because they're worried that that might corrupt their children. They're worried that that might lead their child away from Christ or some, you know, things of that nature. Okay. Um, another thing you have to do as a fundamentalist Christian is you have to perform. Okay. You have to play, you have to be doing the part. If you Say you're a fundamentalist Christian and you can't rattle off memorized biblical scripture, you don't go to church, you don't go to church functions, you don't teach um, your kids the, the church, the religious doctrine, then you're not a Christian. Are you really a Christian? That kind of bullshit. Um, uh, you, so yeah, you have to, you have to do the motions. You have to perform the actions that make you considered a Christian. Like you, you have to have been baptized you have to have done this thing you have to have done that thing etc okay um you have to you often have to this is a, a more extreme example but it is extremely common um you likely have done missionary work you've likely gone um somewhere disadvantaged and you know <sighs> built built people roads or something built communities, roads, built houses. Um, and then you, you know, make sure to mention that you're a part of this church and you're with your church group and that's what led you here. Um, and you do have to, you do actually have to, to proselytize. Like that's, that is expected of you. And that doesn't necessarily mean, you know, street preaching. Um, but it means like if you're, um, asked to do something at work that goes against your religion, you're expected to not do it, you know, something like that. Um, or if you're expected to do something, I'm thinking about that stupid fucking movie, God's Not Dead. Like, I, I haven't even seen that whole movie, but in the trailer alone, um, there's a professor and he says, okay, you need to write these words. God's not dead. 
you need to write these words on your paper. And the one Christian kid in the class says, I'm not going to do that. Because everyone knows if you write something on paper, it means that's how you think and how you feel. And nothing can ever change that. Anyway, um, you do have to proselytize. And proselytize doesn't just necessarily mean um, what I just said. It also means, you know, like building up other people in the community with your same beliefs, um, promoting the really unhealthy, um, you know, emotional abuse within the church, um, just just following the status quo and maintaining the status quo, I think, is proselytizing. Um something that happens a lot of the time within fundamentalist circles is love bombing. If you, you know, suddenly become Christian or you convert someone who is Christian, um, you get a lot of attention and you get a lot of praise. Or if you do the really, really Christian thing in a tough situation, then you get a lot of praise and you get a lot of love. Okay. Um, that's very common. Okay. So let's get on over to the trans cult. So um, in the trans cult, there are also insiders and outsiders. And um, if you're not uh, a member of LGBTQIPABBQ, what the fuck, um, you're an ally. If you're just a straight person, you're an ally. Also, if you've ever had a romantic thought about someone of your same sex in your entire life, that means you're bisexual. I'm just kidding. No, it doesn't, but that's how they act. We have an in-group. LGBTQIPABBQ, what the fuck? Plus the allies. Hashtag allies. Okay? And um, there are very clear rules for how you're supposed to behave within the that cult um you're supposed to post certain things on social media you're supposed to um you, you know say the things that you're supposed to say you're supposed to repeat the mantras that they repeat constantly okay um and unfortunately they also create really negative and gross and disgusting behaviors for their children. I saw a video shared a while ago on IG of, I'm pretty sure it was a trans woman. Maybe it was two trans men. It doesn't matter. Two members of the cult, the trans cult, LGBTIQIPA, BBQ, what the fuck? were raising a child and this child was a girl biologically and they were like she was just getting really depressed when she was about three and she just really almost seemed disassociative like morons a three-year-old can't really fucking be disassociative also if they are are you like a trained psychologist are you a trained child psychologist and have been for many years even then i question that label because how the fuck can a three-year-old be disassociative Anyway, they basically cause their child to be trans, okay? And that's because, I don't know, she liked trucks, she wanted to play in the mud or some, and that's, that's part of the, that is really a large part of the, the trans cult belief system is that you, you have to fall into a set of stereotypes, your, the set of stereotypes you identify with most is your gender, okay? So because I don't shave and I'm against women shaving full stop, unless you're a professional athlete, um, because I'm assertive and because I fix things around the house more frequently than my fiancé does, not because he can't, but because I'm better at it, um, that makes me male, Yeah, that's fucking sexist, but that's their thinking process. They love the sexist stereotypes and they promote them. They promote their sexist stereotypes. If you're male and you love wearing makeup and you love fashion design and you want to wear your fashion designs and wear your makeup, that means you're trans, whatever the fuck. I don't care. 
it's all sexist. It's 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 entirely based upon sexist stereotypes, just like fundamentalist Christianity is. Anyway, um, the trans cult actually does formally excommunicate people, and a formal excommunication process from the trans cult, um generally looks like breaking up with them through text message or breaking up with them through social social media and telling them that because you're turf because you believe this um you can no longer be friends with that person uh because you're so hateful and violent towards trans people by having the belief that no one should mutilate their genitals This excommunication tactic also spreads throughout friend groups. So if one person finds out that someone within a general friend group is a TERF, then they have to, first they're going to break up with her or him. Most likely a her, though. Let's be real here. Um, then they have to tell the mutual friends or the other people that, that said TERF in question may know Oh, she, oh, she's a turf. She says turfy things. She she said this turfy thing to me. Then that person has to end the friendship, also likely through text message or through social media, um, etc. Okay. Uh, Sky, I wish I had fucking said to you in response to your text message when you broke up with me. Uh, I, did you feel unsafe with me when you ate breakfast with me three weeks ago? Because I had felt the same fucking way then. You're a bitch. Anyway, um, you want to forgive me? want to say sorry, feel free in my DMs, but, uh, I digress. So, yeah, there is a formal excommunication process within the trans cult. Um, you, you don't have the person in question doesn't have any say in it a lot of the time within an organized religion um sometimes you know the the church members the higher ranking church members or whatever the fuck will question you say hey like they'll they'll take you to like <laughs> a really intimidating setting and say hey did you do x y and z we heard that from so and so that you did x y and z is that true and then the person has to say, yes, they did that, or no, they didn't do that, or yes, they did that, but blah, blah, blah. So they're able to redeem themselves. Okay? Sometimes. Um, that's not true of the trans cult. You cannot redeem yourself if you're, um, if you said the wrong thing. You can't redeem yourself if you did the wrong thing. You can't redeem yourself. Basically, you can't redeem yourself unless you're, um, a trainee panderer 24 hours of a day, seven days a week. If you're not that, well, then you're a violent transphobic term. But um, I digress. Uh, the example I just gave about that child being transed out as a toddler by her unfit parents is an example of how you have to, it's mandatory to indoctrinate children within the trans cult as well. Um, it's mandatory to not give them correct information about their biology. It's mandatory to lie to children and say that you can change your gender, you can change your sex. It's mandatory to describe really inappropriate sexual things to very young children. Hmm. Okay. Um... That's also why they want all these things to be in schools. They want, you know, mandatory trans trender education inf information um, given to children in schools. Let me tell you about children in schools. Um, I personally know someone who used to be an elementary school teacher. And she heard about this other teacher who taught her class about transgenderism. She gave them a little lesson on transgenderism. And after that lesson, there was a girl in the class who said she wanted to have a different name and use he, him pronouns. She would not have come to that conclusion 
had she not been taught that lesson. It never would have occurred. It wouldn't have occurred to her. But um, it's mandatory to indoctrinate children if you're a true trans ally. Um, trans is also see the outsiders as bad. Like I said, they're called TERFs or uh, what's the one for... Oh my word, what's the one for uh, gay men? Oh, Tim's trans exclusionary homosexual male. Yeah, Tim's no turfs or Tim's allowed. I'm just reminded of like, again, I'm reminded of children like, you know, putting the sign on the door, or the sign on the fucking clubhouse or whatever that's like, no boys allowed, no girls allowed, no five year olds allowed. Um, so with with the trans cult and outsiders though they uh it, so i i described secular people within the fundamentalist circles and a lot of fundamentalists understand that they're just going to have to be around secular people to a certain degree um Sometimes they make sure that doesn't happen, though. Sometimes they purposely move somewhere where they know for a fact that's not going to happen. Um, but they really do, you know, you're, you're going to have secular neighbors, you're going to have secular co coworkers, etc. So they understand that to a degree. And um, transes, the trans cult, um, really like to stay in their bubbles. They have like a bubble in which they stay in order to stay away from, you know, the TERFs or uh, Republicans. Uh, a lot of them demonize Republicans because they think that they're all, all of them are just violent transphobes. Um, uh, but you're, and a lot of them, I also know this for a fact, I've experienced this from, people I've met before and that's that um they will make an effort to stay within around a college setting because when you're in college it's it's a very like I don't want to say tight-knit community but it's a pretty clear community like you know there are people who are in college who go who go to your same university um and there are people who don't go to your same university and maybe aren't even in college, okay? And there's there's just like that in itself is a somewhat of a barrier. And I know that people, I've met people who have made the conscious decision to either even stay in college um, or like stay around a college campus because they want to remain within their bubble of people who has the same beliefs as them. Um, but you are actually like pretty much never within the trans cult, you're never allowed to have a friend who's a turf. You're never allowed to associate with a turf. Um, if you do, then that's wrong. And someone finds out about it and they know for a fact that you did it. Um, you might be excommunicated. It's so fucking stupid and childish. I'm going to get into why this is in a little while. Anyway, um, so for performance with the trans cult, um, any time that um, an example or a stat or something is given, maybe in like a somewhat formal setting of this many men did this, this many women did this, you got to bring up non-binaries. You got to bring up trans people. Um that is a form of proselytizing. You have to correct people. That's also a form of proselytizing. Also, pronoun rounds are proselytizing. You're really like, you're really roping everyone in. If there is, you know, a, a number of people in a room and you go around and do a stupid pronouns round, you're saying to everyone there, it's expected of you to state your preferred pronouns. And you're, you're also, it also, it also intimidates them because if someone has never experienced that and they're like, what the fuck, like everyone's doing it, then 
they're just probably going to do it too. They're probably just going to conform out of convenience. And, um, but that's a, a, a really easy way to make sure that others are following the Holy Trans Doctrine. Um, both of these groups have a, like, a general text, general texts that they worship. Um, fundamentalists worship the Bible. They say that they worship the Bible. Um, but it's really just cherry-picked verses that they worship and that are popular within their own um, communities. And But, you know, if you asked one, they would say, oh, yes, the Bible is the word of God, etc. Okay? Meanwhile, um, the trans cult worships popular opinion, and they worship formal academia, and they also worship um, social media stars. You know, actors... Not necessarily actors, but people who are popular on TikTok and Instagram or whatever the fuck, Tumblr even. Um, those are really their, that's their, you know, sacred, those are their sacred words. So that's their sacred doctrine is, you know, the Holy Church of Tumblr, the Holy Church of Instagram, the Holy Church of YouTube, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I have heard of so many people who became trans after they saw other people on YouTube doing the same thing. I've heard this from multiple trans people have said this outrightly in their own videos. The trans cult also performs love bombing. If you come out um, as non-binary or whatever the, f I don't know what the fuck they're saying these days, but you know, you come out as non-binary, you come out as this, you come out as that, you come out as queer, you come out as pansexual, you come out as the other thing, like, you will be love-bombed, people will clap for you, people will put us, do a stupid social media post with you, take a picture with you, smile with you, etc., okay? That is a form of love bombing. And it is a form of maintaining the status quo. And a lot of people just specifically shout some shit out. Like, I'm this! So that they will be love bombed. So that they will be initiated into the cult. Um, something that both groups do but one is worse than the other, is avoid confrontation. Um, if I go to a church and I try to talk to you about something that's important to do within your church and you want to talk to me more about it and say, okay, I'll get back to you about that. Yeah, I'll get back to you about it. I know for a fact you're not going to get back to me because they will avoid confrontation at almost any cost. They will only do it when they absolutely have to. Um, and I think that's likely because of the abusive upbringings that a lot of fundamentalist Christians have had. Um, you know, they were physically abused. They were sexually abused. They were emotionally abused. They were religiously abused. Um, so they feel that when there's a confrontation, that they're going to be attacked. They feel that they will be abused. So they just avoid that at all costs. And it's almost the same with the trans cult, but they avoid personal confrontation. Every time I've been broken up with for being a turf, it's been over the internet or sorry, it's been over technology. Technology has been involved except for one time. But the reason they do that is because, um, that's their, that's their choice of operating. That's how you break up with the turf, is you do it digitally. Also because you're not mature. This is a cult made and fueled and built up by children. So it's not going to be a mature cult. Um, you do it digitally. You break up with someone in an email and a text message over social media because... 
you're not mature enough to do it to their face. And also because you'll probably lose any argument with that person in person if you said it to them in person. Um, they just can't and they will not engage in that, you know? They won't. It's so funny because they they love to harass people online constantly. But if you were to bring that person on camera into a formal setting and question them about their beliefs, like they most likely either wouldn't be able to say what it was or they wouldn't be able to even articulate what it is a lot of the time, what their beliefs are, because they are just so indoctrinated and they're so used to like being online and having a hive mind online that they they can't even say their beliefs on their own with a sacred object like a camera in front of them because they're not prepared to because they're not intellectually capable of doing so because the trans cult is a cult it manipulates your behavior it manipulates your em it, okay it manipulates your behavior it manipulates the information you receive they only worship academia that they agree with there are tens of thousands of articles and academic journals etc cetera, etc cetera, that disagree with them but there are plenty that agree with them and those are the ones that they worship it manages your behavior it manages your information that you receive. It manages your thoughts. Okay. I've heard of a lot of trans folks or a lot of people in general saying like, I feel this way about this thing. And someone else will correct them and say like, well, don't you only feel that way about that thing because that person is a transphobe or some bullshit like that. And they will manipulate your emotions. Therefore, Behavior, information, thoughts, emotions, bite model, full stop. Doesn't she only feel that way because, like, she's a turf? Doesn't she only feel that way because, like, she was raised by turfs? Okay, so let's get into the the cause and effect of this. So many years ago, before it was in any way culturally acceptable to be gay or lesbian, a lot of people were gay or lesbian, obviously. And a lot of them just pretended they weren't and had straight relationships and straight marriages. Um, but a lot of them were like, yeah, I'm not doing that. So what they did was they moved they left their families a lot of them were rejected by their families right so they moved to san francisco they moved to new york they moved to um a gay neighborhood right um and like we can <laughs> this is just this is so fucking obvious and i don't know why people don't fucking see this but it's the most obvious shit ever anyway we can really track the um gay and lesbian movement pretty pretty easily okay we can track their behavior pretty easily um starting in the early aughts okay mid to late aughts is when trans trenderism was starting to get put into the gay and lesbian movement or lack thereof okay and what has happened since the early aughts Everyone has a smartphone now. Everyone. Just about. And if you have a smartphone, well, then you have social media. And if you have social media, you know it's not cool to be a turf. You know it is cool to gang up on turfs. Before social media was really extreme, gays and lesbians were just like, hey, society, why can't you just treat us like normal people? We're not trying to fuck. We're not trying to do bad things to your kids. We're not even going to tell your kids that we're gay or lesbian unless it's they directly, whatever. They're, they weren't interested in that, okay? They were just like, we want to be seen as normal people in society, 
please. Everyone else was really starting to get there. Okay. The rest of society was really starting to accept gays and lesbians. Okay. And then this trans trender bullshit happened. And what a fucking boon for churches. Because since Christian Christians have this fucking open door policy that anyone, anyone who wants to can come into their church. And there are so few people in their churches, they realize, hey, hey, if we say specifically that we allow everyone and put a trans flag and an asexual flag and a transgender gay and lesbian flag in front of our church, well, then we're going to get more churchgoers. And that's exactly what happened. So because gays and lesbians extracted themselves from their families, and rightfully so, they were able to create sort of a, just sort of their own neighborhoods, their own communities, right? But also because so many people were still religious, unfortunately, so many people were still Christian, so many people were still abusively Christian in a fundamentalist manner, those people raised up kids who, for whatever reason, didn't fit in properly, didn't fit the mold of perfect angel Christian child. And these children ran to these communities. This is a phenomenon that I've noticed happens frequently. And that's that, like, so you're on one side of the spectrum, super right-wing, abusive, um, fundamentalist Christian upbringing, okay? And you're on another side of the spectrum, extreme, um, extreme leftism, okay? A group of people who are extreme leftists. These kids, these extremely right-wing um, raised children who become adults will run here. They will, they will jump sides. They will jump to the opposite political affiliation as their parents because they want to disassociate themselves from their parents as much as they can. And they also think that like their parents raised them saying these people are so horrible. You can never be with them that they're like, well, great. That's exactly where I want to be. Anyway, that fueled the trans cult, obviously. Obviously. Um, something I want to just mention here quickly is like, this isn't even necessarily religious. Like all of the abusive shit that I mentioned within um, abusive, abusive Christian values, like you could really apply that to a small town mentality. A lot of small towns, like, really behave almost identically to Christian, to the to the fundy mindset that I described. Um, but it's about people who are not in your town. Like, you're you're the insider. You're in the town. You're good. An outsider comes. They're slightly different. That's not okay, right? I'm just saying, like, this Christian fundamentalist mentality of abuse has polluted our entire culture entire cultures period maybe i should just call it like abusive mentality right because it's every religion and i honestly kind of wonder if um judaism can be sometimes worse because like while you're okay just going back to like the marriage example like say you're Say you're a non-denominational Christian and your parents really want you to marry a non-denominational person. If he, it turns out he's Presbyterian. Okay, well, they wanted you to marry a non-denominational Christian, but at least he's still Christian, even though he's Presbyterian. I forgot where I was going with this. Why was I going, why was I talking about that? I'm just saying that exceptions can be made. Okay, where, where I was going with that was I wonder if Jewish um, circles are p 
potentially even kind of can be even more um, abusive at times just because in the U.S. it's a mostly Christian, a more Christian than Jewish country. So Jewish folks are kind of more set apart. Anyway, that's just a thought I had. All right. What do we do? What do we do? What do we do about this madness I just described to you? And what do we do about the fact that our whole fucking society is being taken over by a religious cult that has infiltrated itself successfully into just about every aspect of our culture? First of all, I don't think that churches need to... I'm I'm a unique person here in that I attended churches before most of them went woke and that I experienced the trans cult before it became mainstream. And now that it is mainstream, churches are bending to its every demand. Let me just say this, though, going back to the uh, Christian and uh, trans cult shit. Christians tend to be more accepting or there is a, a faction of Christians who are more accepting of trans people than they are of gay people, of lesbian people, of gay men and lesbian women. And they expect any gay or lesbian, any trans person to get the necessary surgeries in order to appear more like their opposite sex. Because that way, they at least look more normal. You're at least trying to be a woman if you're a flamboyant man. You're at least trying to be a man if you're a more masculine woman. Because they're so obsessed with their gender roles. They love their gender roles. It's their favorite fucking thing on the earth. That's why in countries like, I don't know if it's Iran, I think it's Iran, where if you're gay or lesbian, you just automatically get a free sex change surgery from the government, whether you want to or not. But if you, if you look the part, that's better than not looking the part. You cannot differentiate from the status quo because it's not okay. What do we do? Well, we can stop. Um, we can stop adhering to the trans cult. We can stop giving in to their demands. You guys don't actually have to do pronouns runs. You don't actually have to put your preferred pronouns on your email signature. I don't know if you were aware of that, but that's not required for anyone. I think that something that's going on here with greater society who considers themselves allies is they think that someone who's trans is really cool because it's hip and new and unusual. Honestly, I felt the same way when I was in middle school. There were some out kids in my, in my middle school who have both since trans. Hi, sorry you cut your tits off. But anyway, um, they have both since trans, but I thought they were really cool. I was like, wow, that's so legit that they are, that that person's an out lesbian, that that person's an out gay man, whatever, right? And these normal folks, these allies, okay, get caught up in the novelty, the novelty of transgenderism that they don't think through the consequences of it. And churches also don't think through the consequences of it at all. And I think that the problem here within both groups is not being accepting of other people's points of view. Can't you be friends with someone who you disagree with on something? Can't you be friends with someone 
who has a different political affiliation than you? The answer is yes. And I expect everyone and anyone who watched this, mo this video who's either a member of the trans cult or a former member of fundamentalist Christianity to fucking own up to that shit. Oh my gosh, this video is so long. Why don't we just carry on doing it? Um, trans cult people who are likely from an abusive, uh, who like not okay. I shouldn't say likely from an abusive. I should say who are likely to have fundamentalist Christianity in their background somehow. probably often flock to the trans cult, not only because they're trying to do that extreme rebellion thing, but also because pronoun rounds, prayer. Mantra, trans women are women, prayer. It's reciting your pronouns. I, I recently found this woman who recites her pronouns first thing in her videos. She says, hey everyone, I'm so-and-so, my pronouns are she, her. Prayer, okay? Um, you know, it's it's just so much like a lot of religion. It's so much like the religion that a lot of people in the U.S. are brought up with. But it's so much more convenient. Do you know how much more fucking convenient it is to just do a pronouns round than expect everyone to close their eyes and listen and sit still for at least 30 seconds when someone says a prayer? I'm just saying these similarities cannot be denied and these similarities in the trans cult and within abusive Christianity and just general abusive um, circles, societies are inextricably linked. Okay? We could not have, we wouldn't have gotten to this point with the trans cult were it not for fundamentalist Christianity, were it not for toxic Christianity. Quote me.